Uh, thank you very much, Josh, for uh, these, uh, these kind words uh, and the great meeting we just had. It is a real pleasure to meet with you and see that there is so much alignment uh, in not just our hopes for the future, but the call to service that brought us both to try and uh, do good in our communities and do good uh, for our fellow citizens. I want to thank uh, Tom for his introduction, for helping pull this together, as well as uh, uh, Kirsten Hillman, our ambassador in, in, uh, in uh, D.C. Um, I'm here in uh, Philadelphia because I got the chance to speak to the SEIU convention uh, earlier today. Uh, the healthcare workers and frontline service workers from across Canada and the United States uh, who stepped up so hugely during the pandemic and continue uh, to need uh, support and investments as we all found out during the pandemic that our most vulnerable seniors and vulnerable citizens were being cared for by people who were in their turn amongst the most vulnerable of our citizens as well and making sure we're doing right by everyone uh, in our communities and building a stronger future is incredibly important because we do see uh, with certain political uh, movements out there that workers' rights are under threat as well as uh, many other sort of fundamental rights that we've all taken for granted in our democracies that require us to be stepping up, articulating them and then fighting for them because we're at a time right now where democracy itself uh, is under significant challenges and I can't be here in the birthplace of American democracy without reflecting a little bit on the fact that democracy didn't happen by accident. It didn't happen by accident because people came together to try and build it and create it and worked really hard at it. It didn't happen by accident and it doesn't continue without effort. And I think one of the big challenges we have is we're taking things for granted we're allowing misinformation and disinformation to uh, infect our body politic and our citizens. Uh, and people are not seeing uh, the way some of the building blocks of the freedoms and the successes that we've been able to build in um, two of the freest countries on earth, Canada and the United States, uh, are now being challenged in pretty fundamental ways. And it goes with the time we're in where the reality is this is an unbelievably consequential and stressful time for citizens. Whether it's the impacts of climate change, we've already started a, another wildfire season in Canada, so uh, you know, I apologize in advance if, uh, <laughs> uh, if we give you another summer like we did last summer. I mean, it's funny, not funny, um, because the reality is extreme weather events, whether it's wildfires or floods or droughts, are um, beginning to convince even the largest climate skeptics that uh, the cost of inaction on climate change is far greater than the cost of uh, acting responsibly to build both resilience but also reduce our climate emissions as, as countries and as a world. It's not just climate change, it's continued hangover from the pandemic and its impact on the global economy. Uh, as we're dealing with inflation that is finally coming down uh, in both of our countries. Hopefully interest rates will follow soon as well. But the disruptions on supply chains have left things more precarious than they were before. We're also dealing with massively shifting geopolitical forces, a rise of authoritarian states uh, that are not just causing challenges in their own areas, but are deliberately targeting our democracies to undermine people's faith in our own institutions, either uh, through uh, direct propaganda and uh, messages, of disinformation and misinformation on social media, or through uh, undermining uh, our own uh, confidence in our institutions through, uh, through foreign interference of various types. There are real challenges out there that people are falling uh, victim to at the same time as we're seeing uh, Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. We're seeing terrible, terrible conflict and uh, death in the Middle East as well. There are a lot of reasons for people to be incredibly anxious about the future. And you have unscrupulous politicians in every country around the world who are trying to amplify and exaggerate those fears and make people feel uh, like uh, everything is broken and going in the wrong directions. And the challenge that we have as responsible progressive leaders is to remind people of both the opportunities we have, but the opportunities we have to fight for every single day. Um, it's easy to put forward protectionism as the best way 
uh, to support workers in any given place. But the reality is when we can point to the fact that uh, Canada and the U.S. have seen the best year for trade in our history uh, over the last year and that here in Pennsylvania, yeah, no, that's, a, that's worth an applause. We can see that trade is not a zero-sum game. And indeed, as uh, countries look to reliable supply chains and uh, dealing uh, with reliable friends who share values and outcomes, uh, whether it's on critical minerals, whether it's on energy, whether it's on uh, AI and high-tech manufacturing, whether it's on electric vehicles, uh, doing more as friends and partners is good for both of our countries, for jobs, but it's also good for the world as uh, we can position ourselves as uh, those suppliers of energy and of solutions. I was talking with uh, the governor earlier about the fact that you know, there's a strong energy industry here, there's, uh, there's an understanding that uh, the way things were done in the past is going to need to change and it's not a liberal plot uh, against it. Uh, it's the fact that investors from around the world are understanding that investing in a cleaner, greener economy is going to make an awful lot of money and create a whole bunch of new jobs. But even sustain a lot of old jobs too. If you're a pipe fitter or an electrician working for an oil and gas company, you're going to be able to do even better work as a pipe fitter or an electrician in a hydrogen company or in a uh, carbon capture and storage company or in uh, any of the new exciting areas that are being developed as we lean into the future. And these are the kinds of things that we do best when we do together. Uh, in a a state like the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, where Canada is your number one trading partner, as Josh pointed out, actually we are uh, more, uh, we are, you export more to Canada than to the next four countries combined uh, every single year. But what that means for me is, well, why not five or six countries combined? Let's, let's do even more. And I think uh, what we've been able to see today, just in the conversations we've had, but of course, uh, the ongoing conversations that we have uh, across the border with friends and partners as we build a better future, really, really matter. It matters because creating economic growth and jobs and opportunities is a way of allaying some of the anxiety people feel about the future. But it's also about reminding people that our institutions work, that our democracies work, that our communities are strong and resilient, that the system can be there for people. It's not worth you know, saying it's broken, throwing up your hands and burning it all down, as some would have us do. And that challenge is really what uh, brings me time and time again uh, to talk with friends about how we can grow the opportunities for everyone around the world. Because if the pandemic showed us anything, it's that everyone's connected whether we like it or not. Uh, and the more we can be thoughtful about how we build for that stronger future, the better off we're all going to be. Millions of good jobs on both sides of the border, uh, exciting opportunities to create solutions for the world, whether it's in health sciences or AI or quantum computing, or whether it's in uh, heavy industry or manufacturing. There are so many things we do better when we do together, uh, and to see all of you gathered here tonight to, uh, to come together is really inspiring for me. Alors, je veux vous remercier uh, d'être ici ce soir. Je veux vous remercier pour votre amitié et tout le travail qu'on va continuer à faire ensemble. You don't get to hear from a Canadian without hearing from some French. Uh, je suis très content d'être ici uh, en Pennsylvanie et j'ai bien hâte de pouvoir continuer à travailler avec vous tous. Thank you for being here. Looking forward to meeting you all. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you.